everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're going to be talking about our air layers. We're going to be taking them off. We're going to be just talking about the whole process, showing you guys some of the results so far. It's been about a month and a half since I put on a lot of my air layers. Um, and then also just talking about what's next. And you can see right here, this is an air layer that we took off about four or five days ago, and it's definitely a success. You can see none of the leaves are drooping. Everything looks happy. Everything looks healthy. Even some fruits that we mistakenly left on here. You can see we took off a lot of the fruits down here in the pot after we watered it in. And also we took off a ton of leaves. And that's really the key here is that you want to make sure you have a nice balance between what's on top and what's on bottom. If you don't have enough root mass to support what's on top, that leaf surface area, you're not going to have a happy tree. It's going to start drooping. A lot of these leaves are going to start ejecting themselves. In fact, you may lose all the leaves. And since it's only September 15th here, somewhere around mid-September, we don't want to be making sure that we're losing these leaves. We need these leaves to help establish this air layer for the next month and a half. That's really the whole objective of why I remove this now. And you can remove it sort of anytime you want, depending on your discretion. I can't really give you guys the perfect day here, but I'm going to show you guys a good example of why I'm removing some of these now. First off, I can get them sort of established, right? I don't really want these air layers to grow. I want them to form more roots. I want them to really establish themselves either in the ground or in a pot. And you can see this air layer has only been on here for about a month and a half, really formed a huge root mass. And if I leave this on, let's say about another month, the soil in here is gonna really start to dry up because we have so many roots the soil can only stay wet for so long. A lot of these roots are gonna start uptaking that water that's in the bag. So if I leave this on too long, we're gonna have a situation where the soil dries out and the roots are not gonna be very happy. The air layer is not gonna be very happy. So it's kind of a timing situation. I could wait until this tree, as an example, is completely dormant and I could take it off more naturally that way as if instead of taking an air layer off during the active growing season, I'm taking it off during the dormancy process, which is kind of like just taking a cutting. But the timing is not really right with this. Some of these air layers, again, we put them on a month and a half ago, but there's others, let's say, if I show you guys this air layer here, we put on our black Madeira KK. See, we have two pots stacked up on top of each other, wrapped around the trunk. You know, that is really uh, an air layer that really takes time to fill in. So it's only been about a month and a half and I'm sure there's roots that have formed in this pot, but it's not all the way around the pot. It's not as healthy and happy as the air layer we just looked at. In fact, you know what? Let me take off some of this tin foil over here. We do potentially have some black Madeira fruits that I can pick today, which is really awesome. Um, it's been a really great season so far for the black Madeira figs, but if I take this off, a month and a half ago, look how many roots we got. So certain varieties will root an air layer, it seems like a bit quicker, also depending on the amount of energy that they have available to them. But you can see this, if that up there hasn't rooted itself fully, you can bet that the, the roots down here in these larger pots have not. So what I'm gonna do probably soon in the next month is take off these air layers on top. Let these really finish fruiting out I don't want to rush this because it's got, look how many fruits are on here, right? So if most of these are going to ripen, I should say, or probably, let's say about 75% of them are going to ripen, I don't want to be taking off this air layer prematurely. And then that way I won't get these fruits. So I won't get them at the quality that this tree is capable of supporting. Whereas a young air layer is not going to really be able to support and give the sugars and the carbohydrates to those fruits. So it's really up to your discretion. It's really up to you. Every air layer is different. I can't say exactly when to take this off, but what I can say is that when we take this off, we certainly want to be removing a lot of these fruits and also a lot of these leaves. Um, so let's take off one right now and show you guys, um, show you guys the planting process. So what I'm doing is coming in underneath with my pruning shears. We're going to try to get underneath the air layer here. And sometimes you could kind of clip off the wrong thing. So, it's really important here, guys, that we take your time with this little process, and I don't want to mess this up, especially because I'm holding a camera here. I'm just slipping this in here as far as I can. And I didn't get the whole thing 
I don't think. So I need to go even higher. There we go. Okay. So air layer off, and you can see the cut we made right here. We didn't want to cut into these other branches here. We just wanted to make sure we get this off. And we got ourselves, realistically, a beautiful, beautiful, healthy air layer. In fact, this air layer has so many roots, just from my own experience of knowing this, it has so many roots that I'm not gonna have to take off a lot of these leaves. In fact, I'm probably gonna leave on all the leaves, and I may even leave on some of these fruits because what I want the tree to do is not to grow. I want the tree to grow roots. So by leaving on some of these fruits, potentially, um, that will help it not grow. Because once you take this off, it kind of sends a signal to the tree and it's like, hey, something's up. First off, we need to figure all this out. We're no longer attached to the mother tree. And uh, I think the more natural response could be to grow. It depends on the tree, depends on the situation. We're gonna put you guys down here on the tripod. Excuse me for just one minute while I set this up. And I think it's important here, guys, to come in here and really be careful with these roots. I think it's very easy to disturb this. And the more we disturb these roots, the less roots we have. Like I said, we wanna have that nice balance between what's on top and what's on bottom. So if we're, we're messing with that balance, we're making that balance worse it's not gonna be good. And preferably, you actually want the soil to be a bit dry because when you take them out of these bags, I find, if the soil's really wet still, you're gonna have an issue, believe it or not. And I really should have scissors for this, but you're gonna have an issue with wet soil because when the soil's wet, it just kinda crumbles away. When it's dry like this, just like transplanting, a lot of our trees into larger size pots is that the soil when it's dry it just holds together better and because it holds together better you just have less transplant shock look at that that is just beautiful guys holy hell this is like honestly one of the better air layers i think i've ever seen and i have it to attribute a lot of these success stories we'll show you guys more of them in a minute but i have to attribute a lot of this success this year specifically to taking off the bark and the cambium and therefore exposing that hardwood. If you only take off the bark and don't take off the, all of the cambium, I think it takes a bit longer for the air layer to form roots. Um, that whole process is just a bit delayed. And what we're doing now is we're actually just gonna dig ourselves a little hole in here. And I'm planting this one in the ground, right? And here I am in the fall, September 15th, in zone seven, planting this in the ground. But the reason why I'm planting this in the ground is because one, I wanna have this variety in the ground. I wanna have a lot of these, I think, in the ground. But two, we're gonna be covering this in the winter time. We're not going to let this tree brave the elements. A young tree like this, a young air layer, a young rooted cutting, a lot of these, if we let them get to zero degrees Fahrenheit here, like we do in, in my winter time, we're gonna have ourselves an issue. So we also want to make sure that we're burying. We're gonna cover this, but we're also, if it is exposed to the elements, that we need to bury some of these nodes down here. If we bury some of these nodes, we're gonna make sure that even if the top dies back for whatever reason, that these lower nodes below the soil will have itself a really nice, easy time of coming back and re-sprouting from that base. If we don't protect some nodes below the soil in a cold climate such as mine, we're going to struggle. And we're just gonna fill this back in. And actually the soil here is a bit dry. In this particular bed, I have it in pretty much full peat moss not ideal. Whoa. All right, guys, so we had a little bit of a camera malfunction there. You guys fell over. I hope everyone's all right. 
don't report me to the uh, organization for camera abuse if, if that exists. But uh, we got ourselves our air layer here in the ground. Nice and neat. We packed in the soil. It's probably a really good idea to water this in pretty well. Get ourselves a nice established start here. It's really dry in this bed because it's mostly peat moss. And also we have had no mulch on top of the soil. You can see these leaves here potentially are already starting to curl up a bit. And that's not a good sign. We probably want to keep an eye on this. Make sure in the next day or two that this thing isn't looking too bad. If it is, it starts drooping a bit. Start taking off some of these lower leaves, especially some of these larger ones here. Get rid of that surface area. Our tree is going to get established over the next month and a half. We're going to have a healthy, happy start to next year. Um, now, this tree here is called the Rucciolo de Elba, so we need to make sure that we label this. And that's the key here, guys. Label, label, label. Don't forget that. Make sure what our trees are. And also, let me go over and show you guys some other air layers that we did. I'm going to show you guys some others in the ground. Certainly the ones in the ground are way better at growing roots quickly, as you can see here on the Ronde Bardot. Look how many roots are on this, on this thing. We have one back in here that isn't quite ready just yet. But just in general, these things are a lot easier to root when they're in the ground versus in pots. And this is a tree here that we just put in the ground. We dropped some of its leaves. It's been having a difficult time transplanting. That's okay. It's just getting adapted to its area. So those are not ready. If I bring you guys over here to some other in-grounds, they look fantastic. This is uh, La Magdalene over here, completely filled with roots. Um, the same thing we have over there with our LDA, completely filled. We have some others in the front, Improved Celeste and Malta Black that are just bursting at the seams with roots, which is really great to see. Those are the ones, all the trees I just mentioned are the ones that I'm going to be taking off today. Um, but if I show you guys some of them in pots, we haven't had some of them on here as long. At least I, I don't recall. You can see down there, Sucret doesn't even have tin foil on it, which is a huge mistake because a lot of this is going to start drying out, a lot of that soil. We have some De La Roca here, which actually is starting to form some roots, which is good to see. But a lot of these trees in pots just don't root as quickly. They don't have as much energy. Um, I shouldn't say root as quickly, they just don't have as much energy to be devoting towards all this root growth where in the ground there is just so much nutrients. Here we have a Rasty's Persian Unknown air layer that actually looks pretty good. We can probably remove that one today. But I've got a fig up here that looks like it's going to be ripe any day. So I may wait a bit. Um, but you know, getting these things established I think is my priority number one. If I come down here and look at White Triana, this is not a good sign. None of them have roots on them just yet. None of them are showing roots. So the things in the, the air layers in the potted, potted trees, guys, are just not of the same caliber. They just don't have that same success. And it just takes a bit longer. So a bit of a shame, but once these things get themselves rooted out nicely, let's look at our Here's a white Madeira number one that's showing some roots here on the side, but that's mostly it. So anyway, guys, that is the video I wanted to show you guys today. Removing those air layers, getting them in the ground or getting them in pots. If you live in a warm place, don't be afraid to take them off, you know, right away. Um, you guys don't have that extreme cold that comes in here and really knocks them down. Um, so you can kind of remove them at any time you want and get them established anytime you want. Um, here in this climate and similar climates, it's just a bit of a restriction that needs to be done. So um, anyway, guys, I want to thank you all here for watching. I'm going to get myself some nice black Madeira figs this morning and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Take care.